Okay, so Connor McDavid got mad, and this happened. By dry saddle, another breakaway! This time, he wins it! Heading into this year's playoffs, McDavid remembered what Mikey Anderson did to dry saddle, and this happened. Oh, and it's McDavid again! And Louis, we've seen this before. After getting lit up by Mike Richards, Evgeny Malkin, would get so angry, he would take one of the most ridiculous in your face slap shots. Malkin basket hanging in solo. Why did score? During the Avs Stanley Cup run, Nathan McKinnon's frustration turned into this. Going through the speed burst, one stick Kelly! Oh my goodness, what a goal from Nathan McKinnon! On one hand, McKinnon's built up anger led to one of the most beautiful playoff goals in NHL history. But on the other hand, McKinnon's frustration would lead to this outburst. Toronto, McKinnon wants a tripping call. He doesn't get it. Because he allowed his emotion to take over, he would lose focus, which took him out of the play. He wasn't able to back check. By the time he got to the bench for a line change, it was too late. Say play on. Everly down low. Shot. Score! In this pivotal moment, would allow Seattle to defeat the defending Stanley Cup champions. So the question is, why? How can the same frustration lead to highlight real goals? Well, at the same time, it can be the demise of a player. And speaking of McDavid, the brand new, guaranteed, Connor McDavid pack has just hit the stores. You are looking for one of these beauties among many other cards. Check it out, link will be down below. To help explain this phenomenon, I first have to introduce the concept, emotional fuel, or perhaps don't poke the sleeping bear. Some players, say Patrice Bergeron, Quinn Hughes, are considered to be flatliners. Their demeanor is calm, collected. When things get frustrating on the ice, they are able to stay focused, which allows them to be consistent on a night-to-night -night basis. These are players every team needs, as they are reliable. Because of their calm demeanor, these players are far less likely to need emotions in order to elevate their game. Whereas, on the other side of the spectrum, we have players whose games are fueled by emotion. Whether it's getting rocked, frustration boiling from the opposing defense, or maybe a chirp strikes a certain nerve, these players will seemingly unlock another gear, as if they have a NOS button that can only be pressed under specific conditions. And to explain this theory further, I have developed what I call the RTH baseline to emotional energy scale. On the Y axis, we have emotional energy. On the X axis, we have baseline skill. In between these two lines, we have the emotional sweet spot. Above the sweet spot, we have the danger zone. You don't want to be there. And to give you some perspective on what this graph means, Connor McDavid is the best player in the league. Therefore, he would be on the far right in terms of baseline skill. And on a typical game, he plays within this range. However, in moments where he's triggered by emotion, he's able to elevate his game to here. Meaning, McDavid is unstoppable. McDavid had his rookie season ended against the Flyers. It is no coincidence that ever since that moment, McDavid has been on a revenge tour in every single matchup. In fact, ever since the infamous game, McDavid has registered 25 points in 12 games. The man has a vendetta, which also emphasizes, don't make McDavid mad. However, if McDavid gets too hot-headed, he might surpass the sweet spot and enter the danger zone. In this zone, players lose control of their emotions. Therefore, they lose focus. And to further explain how this loss of focus can be the downfall of a player's career, let's take a look at the incident. Crashes into the flames net. When you think of McDavid, the first thing that comes to mind is his skating. Skating is also a trait that is directly fueled by emotion, as we have seen it time and time again. Maybe Edmonton is down by a goal late in the third. Connor McDavid will hit that NOS button, and in many instances, my god, it works. Couldn't get the shot away, he still has it. Wrap around backhand attempt, he still has it. He shoots, he scores! However, if McDavid pushes it, this can happen. David, McDavid, fly it in! And he crashes into the Flames net. And this wasn't just a normal, regular season matchup. No, 
This is the Battle of Alberta. Outside playoff hockey, the Battle of Alberta matchups are hands down the most intense regular season hockey. In the previous matchup, the Calgary Flames embarrassed McDavid on home ice. And if you think players don't take pride in the Battle of Alberta, you would be sorely mistaken. Because after getting shut down in the first period, McDavid fueled by pride, emotion, would take it too far, as he would lose control and become reckless. And as a result, he would enter the danger zone, where he would suffer a brutal PCL tear. This is a career-altering injury, which would result in Connor McDavid missing the entire playoffs. However, this game proved to be pivotal for McDavid, as he would learn for the first time in his career that him losing control of his emotion can be the single downfall of his career. And ever since this game, McDavid has reached a new level of focus. Learning from your mistakes is how you become great. On the opposite side of the spectrum, let's look at Tony D'Angelo. Whether you like him or not, D'Angelo at his peak is an elite offensive defenseman. He plays a game that is constantly in the sweet spot. The man is hot-headed, therefore, it is easy for him to cross that line. And because of this, we have seen catastrophic meltdowns, which has led to D'Angelo not only losing tens of millions of dollars in potential salary, but because of his inability to control his emotion. There were instances where he nearly ended his own career. Okay. So what about the Flatliners? Patrice Bergeron is of course, the best two-way player the game has ever seen. The man is consistent. Therefore, his game would lie around here, as his game does not rely on emotional energy. Nathan McKinnon is the best example of an elite player who constantly plays in the sweet spot. In most games, he's able to keep it under control, but he is constantly walking that line. Jordan Bennington is also a perfect example. When he's in control of his emotions, he was able to lift a bottom feeder team to winning their franchise's first Stanley Cup. When he does lose control, he does stuff like this. Back there, oh! he checks the Hurricane player, or Stahl checked him either way. Or perhaps he is Swiss cheese and net. So, I would place him somewhere around here. His emotional upside is huge, but he tends to go into the danger zone. And if you're asking, Rob, why is this part of the sweet zone far more open? This area right here emphasizes how underdog players, let's just say Arturi Lekkanen, are able to fuel their game through emotion and reach limits far beyond any scouting report. We see players like this in every successful playoff run. For Vegas, it was Ivan Barbashev. Converting raw emotion into energy is truly a game changer. And if a team is able to identify these players, not only that, keep these players in check, that is when we see dominant playoff runs. Hell, I would make the argument that this is how Florida shocked the hockey world last season. And now that we've gone over the concept of emotional energy, we can go on to the next theory. Emotional fluidity. Yes, players can feel their game with emotion. Can they control it? JT Miller, like D'Angelo McKinnon, is a player who constantly plays in that sweet spot. And when he's able to stay focused, he's a top power forward in the league. But when he isn't focused, his game deteriorates. Turnovers due to a lack of focus, incidents on the ice and bench. So the question is, how do you keep these players in line? The way I look at it, there is three options. One, your team is made of strong leaders. Think about how Patrice Bergeron, or perhaps Zidane Chara, would help shape Brad Marchand's career. This man would be licking players to this day if he wasn't being constantly scolded. Two, teams continue to build upon the world of sports psychology. Nathan McKinnon has stated that him embracing that world was the turning point in his career. Three, you have a coach that has the style, approach, influence to keep players in line. And for JT Miller, that was exactly what happened. Before Bruce Boudreau was fired, JT Miller was constantly in the headlines for his antics. The acquisition of Rick Tockett, a man who doesn't take shit, would instantaneously impact JT Miller's game. With Boudreau, JT Miller was on a 73 point pace. Now, not bad of course, but after Vancouver hired Rick Tockett, Miller would finish the season on a 96 point pace, and it doesn't even stop there. Because of a strong coach that aligns and helps keep JT Miller in check, this instilled focus would even lead to JT Miller nearly qualifying for the PGA Tour. The game of golf is a focus game. 
A coach has a large impact on focus. Yes, some players do really well with a less strict system, but the Rick Tockett example truly emphasizes that keeping your players focused is the difference between making the playoffs, getting sent home. And I'm sure many of you watching this video can relate. I remember back in my playing time, I would be waiting for that turning point. Usually it was getting rocked. I would instantly perform like a different player. But to be honest, I definitely relied too much on emotion. And in many cases, it would be my downfall. In fact, this emotion would make me think I could lay out a six foot five mutant. I hit him, my knee went the other way, and just like that, my playing time was over. And if you are someone with aspirations of being a professional hockey player, for real, keep this in mind. Emotions can fuel your game, but they can also be the downfall. If you are constantly entering that danger zone, you are your own worst enemy, developmental wise. Let me know if you've had experience with emotional energy, as it is a topic I am fascinated in. Also keep in mind that this scale is purely subjective, but I do think it helps put things into perspective to why players do certain things. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.